Ready. Yeah, uh, excited, you know, good win uh, versus a really good team. I, I think uh, just a ton of respect for Campbell and their program and their coaching staff and just really, you know, their players. They're just a really good team and so excited about that win for us. That's a big win, especially coming off of two losses. Uh, I wish we could come in here and talk about a 40-minute game, but, uh, you know, we have a lot to grow and we got to – we got to learn and understand that, that it's not a 33-minute game. I mean, I think we had a 22-point lead with 6.48 to go, and, and you know, we end up winning by 10th with fouling, et cetera, down the stretch. But uh, we, you know, that's really where the focus was in the locker room, and a little disappointed about that because it really should be about, it should have been about a 40-minute complete game. Uh, but at the same token, uh, we're going to learn from this. A lot of guys that were in the game late, they were either playing in high school or AAU this time last year or were in games when the game had been decided already and they weren't part of maybe building that or being part of that first 35, 34 minutes. So something that we can learn from and win or lose, we have to find a way to get better and that's where the focus will be in terms of that. All right, questions? Because you were pretty confident in your team's ability to kind of bounce back, respond from the, the two games. So you know, what kind of gave you that confidence and you thought they kind of yeah, I really do, and I was very proud of the guys when we talked about that. Just uh, that they came in with a very good mindset, an open and locked in mindset when we watched the film of the South Carolina State game and we started prep immediately for Campbell. They're a very good offensive team, and so we started some prep right away the next day on Wednesday, the film room came out, we had one day of prep on the court Thursday, and then we had our shoot around today. So for those guys to be locked into a unique system and a very good offensive team, I think Campbell in their last game at 80, you know, scored over 80 points in the game. And so we, we knew it, and our guys were mentally, they were locked into it. And then from the other side of it was, we really, since the South Carolina State game, from the locker room until just now, from the end of the locker room after the loss to right now, we talked about, guys, all we want to put everything in the next three days is maximum effort in terms of what we do as a team, defensive intensity and execution, so the game plan and our defensive intensity and our rebounding execution. And that's it. And I said, we, we trust what we're doing on offense. We, we're going to be fine there. But we have to make sure that those three things, win, lose, or draw, are at the highest level when we step on the court to play Campbell. Looking like you guys were just passing the ball a bunch, like really making sure to share the ball. Was that an emphasis you talked about going in, or is that just kind of a project? That no, again, I think the coaching staff, when I think about what Nick Matson and, and Riley Davis and Jake Morton, all three guys, what they do with emphasizing what needs to be done on both sides of the ball, and you know whether it was the preparation for guarding them or specifically their defense. They're a very gap-oriented team. And that's why Javon had five turnovers outside of that late turnover versus the press. When you play a gap-oriented team that's really sitting in there, you got to understand that you can't get in there. They're not going to let you get where you want to go. You're going to have to keep moving the basketball and try and create some rotations with that movement that you spoke of. And Javon was getting in those gaps and trying to put the ball behind his back or trying to change directions, and there's too many hands down there. Now you've got two, three guys loaded up to the ball with this type of defense. So... The emphasis going in was get that ball moving, get him moving, get him moving, and that's maybe where you could find a crease where you could throw the ball inside. But if you just thought you were going to get downhill into the paint just off an isolated drive, it wasn't going to happen. So we really emphasized the last two days during the offensive portions of practice, moving the basketball and popping it around. Yeah, you know, first start in college, I'm sure that's exciting for him. And uh, we spoke the night after he scored 18 that night, you know, and obviously he had a nice offensive game, but the team result wasn't it. And, you know, we talked a little bit that evening and they said, Ezra, that for him to continue to grow as a player, he has to forget about that right away. And, and I give Ezra so much credit for this reason. You know, Ezra hasn't played as much as he wanted to up to this point. Like all players, they want more, and, and I got great respect for that. But what Ezra has never done is ever held his head down. He's never had a poor attitude. He's kept an incredible attitude. In fact, he has tried to seek out coaches, myself, to watch more film individually, do things like that where prior to him having that game, 
you know, he did that after games he didn't play a lot or after games he didn't play well. So I just give Ezra so much credit for his mindset to stay humble, stay hungry as he's trying to get on the court. And tonight, we'll look at the tape, and there's things he should have done better tonight. He knows he can't get his shot blocked at the rim that many times. And he understands that, and he's going to work on it, but he's the first to say it. And defensively, you know, we really trust Ezra in terms of his defensive versatility. So, uh, yeah, I'm proud of Ezra. Could you tell uh, during shoot-around today that R.J. was going to come out here and shoot the ball like he did, 7 for 10 from three-point landing? Provided a huge spark to that guys. If I could tell that at shoot around, I'm not I'd be probably coaching in the big boy league up in the NBA if I knew how to predict that. No, you know what? But I tell you, RJ every day, every day RJ is locked in. He really is. Every day. And it doesn't whether he makes mistakes or doesn't make mistakes or makes shots or doesn't make shots, he's locked into the team focus and what we're trying to do. And he had great energy today. He had great energy yesterday, but he had great energy the day of the South Carolina State shoot-around. He's a consistent person, and that's what I love so much about RJ. And th to be honest with you, the only play I remember at one point was the shot he didn't contest late game. And that's the one, but after thinking about RJ through the game and looking at the stat sheet, I mean, he was dynamic on offense, but, but he earns every minute of it because of how he does everything, the way he carries himself, the way he works in the classroom, the way he works in practice, the way he works on his own. I think he has earned well, you know, a, a successful game like that. Coach, for Javon to almost have a double-double without making a shot, like, does that just show you how much he can affect the game without scoring? And also, does that kind of maybe show how defenses are paying attention to him a little bit more? A hundred percent. I mean, we talked about that with Javon, that, that every game as more film is out there and stuff, there's, that target gets a little bigger on us because they know he's a really good player. He's a really good point guard. But what I think about that is that's a true point guard line right there. To have nine points out of nine of nine from the free throw line, 11 assists, what do you have, four rebounds or so, I think, you know, or six rebounds, six. I mean, he's, you know, inching towards a triple-double without making a field goal. That is a real, I mean, he controlled the game from a point guard perspective, you know, you, you know, and that's what we would call it, that, that he really had a great floor game in terms of all aspects as a point guard. And he did. I mean, you know, nine of nine from the free throw line, when we were obviously struggling late game, he made the free throws that were really important for us. Uh, but he's the first to say in that locker room, he knows late game, some of those turnovers, some of those things, great point guards, he knows he, he holds himself to a high standard that he doesn't want to do that. And he will. He will fix that. We will fix that as a team. got to ask about the, the moment with Quentin. He had the, the baseline drive. Is that just kind of a teaching moment as far as awareness? Or kind of what do you see? Quentin is a really selfless player. He is not a selfish player at all on offense. He really plays the right way all the time. The last few days and the last couple games, Myself and the staff have really challenged him defensively. Really challenged him defensively. And sometimes when you challenge someone so much on defense, he did the right thing. He took his mind off offense. But you have to know when you're wide open at the rim. I, that was an innocent mistake. That was something he wasn't, you know, awareness, not whatever you want to call it. It was nothing, you know, you give that ball to Quentin 10 out of 10 times, he's going to dunk the basketball. But. You combine the fact that we've really been challenging him defensively. And let's be honest, the truth is, he's not in the starting lineup for the first time all year. His minutes aren't probably what he wanted them to be. Sometimes you can get in your own head that way. And that, pr that play probably would say would be an example of that. All right, one more question. Thank, thank you, guys. Thank you, guys.